Hey guys, Pseudotech here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are continuing our LFS system and getting into constructing the actual system for our operating system. If you hadn't already figured out, the last chapter or chapter 5, which we're just going to finish up in this video, was creating a set of tools in the tools directory that we can use to actually create our actual operating system on the Linux from scratch disk. So in this video, we're going to quickly finish up the last two steps of chapter 5 and then get on to chapter 6, where I actually start compiling the actual system. Most of this video is going to be about entering the Chroot environment, or Shroot, or chroot, or however you want to pronounce it. If you haven't heard of a Chroot jail before, it's a pretty helpful tool on Linux that kind of makes a virtual machine. It's going to change the root directory of anything that you execute in a certain terminal, so it's going to act like a virtual machine, and that's going to basically make it so that we can compile everything onto the Linux from scratch disk as if we're running the Linux from scratch operating system. So let's get right into it. The last two steps of chapter five are straightforward. First, we've got stripping, which is basically we're gonna clean out some unnecessary things to free up some disk space. I'm not gonna actually remove the documentation, which is recommended in the Linux from scratch book, but I am gonna do the first piece of code, which is just gonna remove some unnecessary things that were created during the compiling process of the temporary system. You'll get a lot of these file format not recognized errors, but don't worry, that's not a problem. Next, we're gonna change ownership of the tools directory. This is really to fix a security issue, which is if we are to create this into an actual operating system, which we're obviously going to do, and someone were to create a user that was called LFS, they would inherit all the permissions to this. So we're gonna change it to the root user because that's kind of default on most Linux operating systems. And we're gonna have to work as the root user from now on, so keep that in mind. The final step is kind of optional, but I would recommend it. Basically, you're gonna back up the tools directory because this can actually be used later. There's a few ways to do this. The first option is to go to your disks program in Ubuntu, or there's usually something pretty similar in most Linux operating systems. And then go ahead and clone your disk into a .img file. Later, you can restore this to any disk and just have it all back up in place. The reason you're going to do this is because you can actually use tools later to create a new operating system on the same book version of Linux and Scratch without going through creating the entire temporary system. Now, that works really well, but it does also back up sources, which aren't necessary because you can always download those again later pretty quickly. So I'm actually going to go ahead into my LFS directory, open up a root terminal, and use tar to save the file into a .tar.gz file. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and export the LFS variable again because it's not set as the root user right now. So now we are officially in chapter 6. The first step is to prepare some virtual kernel file systems. These are kind of file systems, but they don't actually take up any disk space. They're just to kind of mimic the file systems that the kernel will be using. Go ahead and just copy and paste all the commands in the book, like creating initial node devices, mounting and populating slash dev, mounting the file systems, and then finally running this little command that'll fix some things depending on how your system is configured with a simple if statement. You should be good to go and it should all work. I do not have any errors and there's really nothing to go wrong on these commands. Package management is kind of up to you. If you're going to be using this operating system like something as you would Ubuntu or Debian, just as a normal Linux distribution, I would highly recommend a package manager to make sure all the dependencies get installed correctly, uninstalled correctly, and it just keeps track of everything that you have installed on your system. I am going to go with the all in my head method though, because for me, it doesn't really make sense to have the added weight and complexity of the package manager when I can remember what I have since I'm only gonna be installing one or two programs at a time on each installation of this operating system. The Linux and Scratch book doesn't go into too much detail, so just go ahead and check it out. They've got a few options that you can follow and there's plenty of tutorials online to do each of these. So now comes the big moment where we're actually gonna enter the true environment using the code in the Linux and Scratch book. It's fairly simple, but you're gonna set a few variables such as the root to the LFS system root, and also some other things just to make sure everything's configured correctly for making the system. Keep in mind that one, you're going to have to have the LFS variable set when you do this, and two, you're gonna to wanna to be in this environment every time you start compiling. So if you restart your computer, make sure that you mount the drives, do everything that I discussed earlier, and enter this true environment. Now that we're in the environment, we're gonna set up the actual file system. This is using pretty much what is the Linux standard, so it'll actually look pretty familiar to an operating system that you've used before if you're familiar with Linux. Go ahead and run the commands in the book, it'll create a whole bunch of directories, configure it correctly for you, and you should be off to the races. We're also gonna have to configure a few symbolic links that are again in the book just so every package installs correctly. When you're done with those, you have to create a few files, including the password file and the group file. Then you're gonna run this little short command that's gonna replace the I have no name prompt with root as it should be. 
Finally, we're gonna have to configure some permissions of some log files. The first two of the three packages that we're gonna be compiling in the video are pretty simple. In general, you'll notice that it's a very similar process to what we were doing in the previous chapter, but it's not gonna be installing it to the tools directory anymore. It's gonna install it in the proper directories on the actual system. Linux API headers is the first one, so go ahead to your sources directory, unpack it with tar, change to the created directory, then use make MR proper to make sure there are no stale files lying around. To install the Linux API with correct headers, go ahead and run the commands in the Linux from scratch book. Man pages is incredibly simple to install, just keep in mind that there are a few man packages, so make sure you get the correct one, which is man pages. Unpack it, change the directory, then just run make install to get it all set up. And that brings us to our last package today before we adjust the toolchain, and that is glibc. You'll remember that we compiled this before, and it's the main C library. Go ahead and unpack it from the sources directory, change to the newly created directory, and then patch it with one of the patches that we downloaded earlier. We're going to create a new build directory and then change to that, then prepare for compilation. Use make to compile the package. I noticed that make was actually fairly short, and make check is where the majority of the SPUs come from, so just keep that in mind. If it seems short, you're doing just fine. Make check is critical because it's such an important package, so don't skip it no matter what. Go ahead and run it, and it'll be normal for a few tests to fail. You can check on the Linux from scratch book because there's a few that they show that it's totally fine if they fail, so if those are the ones that you're getting errors for, feel free to just skip it. If you have a whole bunch or ones that aren't listed here, you might want to compile glibc again and backtrack a little bit to find any errors. Run a touch command to disable a small error in the install process, and then run make install. Finally, we're going to copy the configuration file with the commands provided in the book. It's a fairly simple process, so just to go ahead and copy and paste the commands in the book. We're going to create the nswitch.comp file, add your time zone data, and after that we have to run tz select, and that'll take you through a couple of prompts that'll figure out which time zone you're in. It'll spit out your answer and you want to use that in the next command. Run cp-v slash user slash share slash zone info slash and then put in the time zone that you just got. Copy it to slash etc slash local time. There's two files that we have to create to configure the dynamic loader, and then you're done with glibc. Adjusting the toolchain is our final step to make sure that everything works correctly with the new C libraries. Go ahead and follow the commands in the book to move a bunch of files, and then amend the specs file so that it points to the new dynamic linker. At this point, it's super important that we run a couple of tests just to make sure everything's working correctly. We're going to run a sanity check similar to what we got before, and you should get pretty much the same output of requesting program interpreter and then a path to ld-linux.so.2 with a couple x86s and 64s thrown there if you're on a 64-bit system. Run the grep command and you should get three outputs all saying succeeded. There's another grep command to verify that the correct header files are installed and it should show include, search starts here, and then slash user slash include. To verify that the new linker is being used, you can run the command in the book, and you can ignore any of the outputs that have dash linux dash gnu in them. The two that you're looking for are search dir, two of those with slash user slash lib, and another with slash lib. The test to make sure you're using the correct libc should output attempt to open, then a path succeeded. Lastly, make sure that GCC is using the correct dynamic linker with grep found dummy.log. The output should be found ld-linux.so.2 at slash lib slash ld-linux.so.2. If you don't get that output, something could be seriously wrong. So make sure you go through it a few times, recompile glibc if you need to, and make sure you pass before you go on. When everything's working, you can delete the dummy.c, a.out, and dummy.log files. And that is about it for this video. In the next four videos, I think, we're going to get through all of the different packages of our final compiling little spree here. And then we'll be on to booting it and getting into the actual operating system, which should be pretty exciting. So thank you for sticking with me, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.